And we're back here on the GSMC Baseball Podcast, bringing you our second segment, which is going to talk about the Orioles calling up prize pitching prospect Kate Povich. But before we do that, I'd like to ask you again to please like and follow the show. We do get a number of questions from viewers, so to ensure that your question does get read on the air, please use the link gsmcpodcast.net. It really does help the show, and it really does mean a lot, so thank you so much for that. And let's get back into the show for today. All right, so we are going to be talking about, again, Kate Povich of the Baltimore Orioles being called up for his MLB debut and just talking about his impact on the Baltimore Orioles and just the overall team. So yeah, Povich did actually start already today. He was caught up last night, but the Orioles game today was at one o'clock. And of course, I'm streaming right now at 345. The current time is so the game is over. Going over Povich start, it was not great, but it wasn't horrible as well. Five and a third innings pitched, five hits, six earned runs, four walks, two strikeouts, a home run and overall a 10-13 ERA. So, yeah, it, it definitely wasn't the greatest start for him. I mean, six earned runs is not what you want to see. More walks and strikeouts is not what you want to see. But going five and a third innings pitch is pretty solid. And really, most of the damage came in the third inning. You know, in the third inning, the or, the uh, Blue Jays did end up scoring three runs on a Vladimir Guerrero Jr. three-run home run. So after that, he kind of settled in. I mean, he did luck let up um, an RBI single, uh, you know, two RBI singles to let up three runs. So it wasn't the greatest, but kind of settled in after that three-run home run, knew more of what he was doing. Two strikeouts isn't the greatest ex- thing exactly in the world, so you definitely want to improve on that. But so there's a lot of pure stuff that I do like about Povich, and I think that overall he's going to be a big impact to this Orioles team. I just did want to mention his start today because it did already happen, and I feel like it would just be kind of neglectful not to mention what he did end up doing today for the Orioles. So yeah, you look at Povich and just what he is to this Baltimore Orioles team. I mean, they have such a sack farm system. So Povich right now is actually the ninth overall prospect to them, uh, according to MLB Pipeline. In the minor leagues, uh, in the minor leagues this year, he had a 3.18 ERA over 11 starts. After that, he had a 1.1 whip, 9.1 walk percentage, and a 32.5 K percentage over. 50, uh, 56 innings. So Povich shows a lot of potential here. Again, really nice swing and miss stuff. 32, 32.5 K percentage. Very, very nice. Uh, again, much higher than the 9.1 walk percentage, which is good. Whip is good. Around one, that's really what you can ask for. Very solid there. You look at the kind of bio of K Povich and just you know what you think about when you look at him. Um, he has four pitches that are very good. Main thing for him is the control. Again, I think that the control with the pitches are very nice with him, and um, you know they work very well. He has a high spin fastball. It gets a lot of swings and misses. It's not great with velocity, but the fastball, again, does have great movement, so you don't really need that. It's kind of a trade-off with him, so it works well there. He does throw at 96 sometimes, but again, not really great for a fastball nowadays. He has a big sweeping slider and a changeup that are also very, very nice. They're definitely plus pitches work very well against right-handed batters, which is good for a lefty starting pitcher, especially one as young as Povich, who is going to probably struggle against them. So that works well there as well. So overall, there's a lot to like with this guy. I think he shows a lot of promise and a lot of potential for this Orioles team, and it's going to end up being a plus arm for them in the future. Overall, he is going to provide a lot of positives here for the future of this team, and I think he's going to be a big part of the rotation. I mean, you already look at the Orioles rotation. It definitely does need some help. You you lost John Means to season-ending surgery. Another pitcher as well whose name is uh, leaving my mind. But you look at this rotation right now, you, of course, have Corbin Burns, who is a bona fide ace. Nothing really to say about him. Grayson Rodriguez, very nice young starter. Kyle Bradish, decent, coming off of injury. So that might affect him a little bit this year. Still a very good pitcher, but at the same time, there are some question marks about him. Same with, as well, Grayson Rodriguez, who... You know, you also have some question marks about Radish has only made six starts, but has done very, very well. An ERA of 3.18 is FIP of 2.11, already over one pitching war according to fan graph. So a lot to love about Radish here, and he's done very, very well. So props to him. But there is some injury risk with him. You also have Grayson Rodriguez, who is, of course, one of the younger Baltimore Orioles pitchers, former top prospect for them for a little while in that organization. It was kind of a question mark if he would ever come up and live up to his potential, but he has done well this year, making 10 starts, having a 3.28 ERA. FIP is around that as well. Done very, very well for them. So 
a lot to like in this Orioles rotation, mainly the top two guys in Burns and Burns, Radish, and Rodriguez. But at the same time, you need more depth after that, especially now with John Means going down. So I think that Povich is going to provide a lot of depth to this Orioles rotation, a lot of good innings. I think that's another thing that provide is good, is good with him, provides a lot of good innings for this team, just can eat a good amount and provides a lot more depth because you look at the future of this team as well. Corbin Burns, he's a free agent after this year. I'd say it's it literally exactly 50-50 if they bring him back. I would say Corbin Burns probably wants to stay in the or with the Orioles. They have a great future ahead of them, and he could be one of the big stars of that franchise on a team that is going to make a lot of deep playoff runs. But are they going to pay him is the question. Do they have enough money to pay him? They have a new ownership group, yes, who may be aggressive in bringing him back, but I don't know. There's going to be a lot of other teams pursuing him, and it'll be interesting to see. So let's say he leaves. You're going to have Bradish and Povich have to step up. Same with Grace Rodriguez. So that provides more depth for you. Just for this year, you've already had some injury risks. You've had Kyle Bradish start the year on the injured list. Grace Rodriguez, I also think, is an injury risk. So I think that overall, this Orioles team needs another good plus young, especially starting pitcher. And I do think Povich does bring that quality to this team. I think there's a lot of things to like about him. And I just think that overall, he is a very good pitcher and is going to be play a big part of this Orioles team. And overall, it will be very, very exciting to see what does end up happening with him and how he does end up performing. I think that overall, there's a lot to love about him, and he really is going to be a big part of this Orioles team, not just this year, but in the future. Looking over in the AL, it's kind of the same as the Yankees. I would say they're neck and neck with the Yankees. These two teams in the AL are much are very much ahead of everyone else. They are the two. They are the cream of the crop. They're the two top guns, and one is going to be the one seed, one is going to be the four seed in the playoff picture. I think that's very clear with how it's going to work. So, you know, it. I think with the Orioles, they need another pitcher for the rest of this year. They need another, and they need to have another pitcher to help with this, help down the stretch, especially against this Yankees team. There are a lot of good other AL teams in this league as well. Again, I don't think any of them are up to the standard that the Orioles and the Yankees have set. But the Guardians have done very well this year. The Orioles have been amazing this year, especially with that pitching rotation, something maybe the Orioles lack a little bit. You also have the Twins, of course, a lot of talent. Red Sox had a good have had, having a good season. Blue Jays, Orioles, I mean, Blue Jays and Rays still have a lot of talent. Astros, a lot of talent. Rangers, a lot of talent. Mariners, just a good, solid team who's leading the AL West this year. So there's a lot to like about, about the AL this year. And there are a lot of good teams that could potentially be a problem for this Orioles team. Now, another thing I want to mention with the Orioles is the bullpen. The bullpen has been a huge strength for the Orioles in these past few years, but I do think it is a little bit of a question mark going into this, going into the rest of the year. You had Felix Bautista there in the closer spot. You had Yannir Cano in the closer spot both times, but both went down with Tommy John surgery. You now have 97-year-old Greg Kimbrell, who has not done the greatest. I don't really, I didn't really like the signing when they signed him. I understood why they did it, kind of getting a veteran in there to close out games, but still not really a big fan of it. So the bullpen might be a question mark going into the rest of the season, especially the closer spot, if they are satisfied with Kimbrell there. I don't know how they should be. He's been bad. You know, you do have a lot of good young relievers on that team. As we've seen the past few years, they know how to churn out good relievers with Bautista, with Cano. So I wouldn't be surprised if we see some 27-year-old undrafted free agent come out of this team and end up being a big part. But also, I think that is something they should look into at the trade deadline, especially getting a closing pitcher, getting another veteran reliever arm. I think one player who could potentially be a big piece of this could be Kenley Jansen of the Boston Red Sox. I think that Jansen would bring a lot to this Orioles team, would bring a nice, steady veteran presence in that closer role if they obviously want. There might be a question mark getting him out of Boston, as the Red Sox aren't horrible and would also be an in-division trade. So that would be interesting to see, but I think Jansen would be a very good fit here for this Orioles team. I think he would bring a lot um, to them. Craig Kimball actually hasn't been that bad, but at the same time, I think he is due for some regression, and I think that there is potentially... Uh, something to look out for with this team, with him, and I think you should be looking to actively add in that in that closing pitcher role. 
So he's already blown three saves, has a good ERA, but three saves right now being blown is not great. So definitely want to look to improve on that. And I think getting Jansen or another veteran lever would be good. Maybe even make a big swing for Mason Miller. I don't think that would be the best allocation of assets, but hey, if you really think he's that guy, go trade for him, I guess. So yeah, that is our second segment here, talking about the Orioles and their call-up of top prospect Kate Povich, and just overall thoughts on them going into the rest of this year. Moving into our third segment, which is going to be talking about Shohei Otani and Paul Skeens and the epic battle they had yesterday, and just talking about the Orioles, not the Orioles, the Pirates and the Dodgers game. So yeah, we'll be talking about that, and we'll see you after the break. So thanks, and bye. Looking for your daily fix of sports talk without having to pay for it? G 